Hello everyone, Xforts here, and welcome to Jojolian Chapter 105 Review and Discussion, which should be a very interesting review this month because, I swear, this is the most conflicted I've been on a Jojolian chapter in recent memory. When I first read it, and during the reading, I was a little bit angry, a little disappointed, but then after my second read-through, I kind of was like, okay, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm building the hype, because it was a very hype-building chapter, but as we'll see, there was something within the chapter that was just... Almost unforgivable, Iraqi. But I'll, I'll kind of go into it more and explain uh, what my thoughts were then and what my thoughts are now. Um, as well as, guys, I heard your comments in the last video. I heard your cries, and don't worry, I listened. The blue Joy-Con is back. You guys really didn't like the red Joy-Con, so blue Joy-Con's coming back. I don't know why you guys care so much. Blue's back. But before we get right into this month's chapter review, I would first like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is pretty much the Paisley Park of the real world. It's like activating your own digital stand with a click of a button that has even more abilities than the wonder of you. With NordVPN, you can unlock more of the internet than you thought was possible while simultaneously making your browsing experience more safe and secure than ever before. No longer will your ISP be able to spy on your internet activity or take advantage of you by selling your data. You'll be protected from any nefarious ISPs or individuals through NordVPN's next generation level of encryption. And beyond just NordVPN's insane protection, you can also connect to thousands of servers and over 60 60 countries all over the world. So say a movie you've been wanting to see or an anime you've been waiting to binge is only available in another region. Well, in just a click of a button on the easy to use NordVPN map, boom, you've just teleported to any of the over 60 available countries and can stream all of that previously blocked content. Like the Thus Spoke Rohan Kishibe collection that just got added to Netflix US. And right now you can get a two year plan at a huge discount at nordvpn.com slash exports and use code exports to get an additional one month free. As well as it's all risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Again guys, that's nordvpn.com slash exports and use code exports to get an additional one month free. So big shout outs to Nord and I appreciate them sponsoring the channel once again. It is always much appreciated. But now guys, I know you've all been waiting very patiently for this month's chapter review, so let's just get right into it. Jojolian chapter 105 and guys, the Endless Calamity has ended. We are no longer in the Endless Calamity. Chapter titles, chapter 105 is titled Invisible Soap Bubbles. I'm not sure if we're getting into a new arc here or if this is just a one-off chapter title, although I could see the potential of Invisible Soap Bubbles part one, part two. And in all the parts, Mamazuku's just like, Josuke, you can't see him. There's something, and we just do that for another like six chapters. I honestly wouldn't put it past a Rocky. But anyways, guys, Endless Calamity is over for now. Although it has been seen in JoJo that we might take a break for a chapter and then go back into like Endless Calamity part 12 or 13 or something. But for now, Endless Calamity has ended and we're getting into something new finally. So quick recap from the end of the last chapter. It was all super hype. Josuke was charging up his ultimate attack. The lines were spinning. It was callbacks to Johnny Joestar. It looked like he was shooting the infinite rotation at the head doctor. And I said, guys, no matter what happens in chapter 105, we will see the result of this impact. And I was wrong. Araki just watched the review and he said, you know what, x Forts? Absolutely not. We're going we're gonna to drag this out. And just because I love you, x Forts, we're going to throw in another Rock insect guys Araki is just pain I, I, I can't take it anymore Araki it's like he is purposely making Jojoli in my my living hell right now okay that's pushing it a little far I didn't hate the chapter that much but Araki's like no 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 rock insect time we're doing it because I I feel like more than anyone else in the community I was really vocal about disliking to do 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 da 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 I felt like it was stalling I didn't like the way a new ability was introduced in the middle of the fight so yeah, for Rocky to pull out another one at this stage, oh guys, I was I was fuming when I first read it, but like I said, very conflicted on this chapter. So getting into it, starting with the cover page, we see a very nice full body shot of Josuke with some nice uh, uh, Joe in the background. I always like when Araki incorporates some sort of font or typography into his chapter covers. It always looks really good. He's got a taste for that. He knows what he's doing. So yeah, just overall really nice chapter cover. So getting into the actual chapter now, finally, and oh no. Oh no, the the guys, the, the, the blue Joy-Con died. We gotta go back to red. Okay guys, red Joy-Con has saved the day. Just just a roller coaster of emotions, this chapter view. I promised blue and now we're back to red. It's just fate, I guess. So guys, finally getting into the chapter here. So the first page starts off with a flashback to the fusion between Joseph Fume and Kira. And honestly, this is gonna take up the first uh, about seven or eight pages of the chapter. And it's really nothing new, just kind of establishing the past and what Josuke is and just giving some more context to what Mamazuku is going to tell us in a few pages here. But a few notable things to 
to make note of. Uh, we see moments before the fusion occurs or before they go underground. Uh, we can see in the background just some, some really nice art, I guess, of the coastline of Morio. You can see the explosion in the background that happened during the vitamin C arc. And uh, yeah, this moment for me is honestly still probably my favorite moment in Jojolian. Just the fusion between Joseph Fumi and Kira and their relationship coming to an end and blooming into something new. Just a really nice moment. I really love these two characters. And just seeing Araki draw it again is, is really nice, especially at this stage in Jojolian. Um, one important thing to take note of is that it seems like Araki has actively removed the birthmark from Joseph Fume. If you guys remember, Joseph Fume had been drawn with the birthmark, I believe, once before. And that was kind of always a lingering question within the community, like, why does he have it? What is his lineage? How is he connected? And it really didn't make any sense why he would have the birthmark. And now it looks like it's been removed. As we see a really clear shot of his shoulder, and it's not there. So it seems like Araki is going to kind of go back and, and retcon that, which I'm fine with. It didn't really make sense why he would, why he would have the birthmark in the first place. And other than that, just him uh, saying, eat it, break the curse, and we'll look up at a new sky, showing that the new Rokakaka will result in a more optimistic future, and that their sacrifice may bloom into something new, which will eventually be Josuke. So, and then we get this dialogue from Mamazuku as we switch back into present time, and I guess this is the reason for the flashback in the beginning there, taking up about nine pages of the chapter, but I liked it, it was still good, I love that scene. And says, Josuke, your soft and wet bubbles is fused with Yoshikage's, uh, explosion ability. So maybe that's why we were shown that kind of to remind us of what Kira's ability was and what uh, Joseph Fume's ability was before they fused and kind of really, really reestablish that Josuke is a fusion between two characters and his ability has a little bit of mix of both of them. As when Soft and Wet became something new through the fusion, it really didn't incorporate any of Killer Queen's explosion abilities, but as we'll see, Maybe it did. So we get an even further explanation of what Josuke's possible new spinning rotation ability might be, but not before Mamazuku tells us once again there's something within them we cannot see. But I'll read this word for word because it is pretty important. It says, those soap bubbles are spinning lines that are so thin they're infinitely close to zero. And I, I really wish Araki would avoid using these terms like infinitely and zero because us as a reader, we think about Steel Ball Run, the themes of zero being reset to zero, the infinite rotation, things like that. But I think what Araki is just trying to say here is that what the soap bubbles are made up of, of are so small that they physically like don't exist essentially so therefore they can go beyond logic all that stuff we talked about in chapter 104 but in the next dialogue box it's something a little bit more interesting it says if you can't see them they don't exist then you probably can't control them either the only thing that's there is the explosive spin so getting back into that killer queen ability and i love that term so much explosive spin like that is josuke's special ability johnny had the infinite rotation and if josuke's spin essentially is manifested through like a version of killer queen that brings killer queen into his soft and wet that would just be so badass and so sick so yeah it looks like the official name for josuke's ability that he's using here where the his spin looks a little bit different it's a pretty unique soap bubble it is the explosive spin that is super badass and a little bit more of establishing of this ability it says but because of that they can cross through anything they can go through walls they are not limited to this world essentially the explosive spin is probably just as powerful as something like the infinite rotation as it's just so abstract not bound to this world able to even overcome the curse and overcome the wonder of you and all of the calamities as we saw in the last few chapters through this ability josuke is pretty much immune to the wonder of you's calamities so yeah Explosive spin, pretty damn powerful, and uh, yeah, pretty, not really an explanation of the ability, but just a little bit more to what this could possibly be. So getting back into current time and where we left off of on chapter 104, we see that Josuke shoots out his explosive spin at the head doctor and this is when i said guys at the end of chapter 104 i was like guys this is gonna connect this has to connect whatever happens in the next chapter josuke is going to hit the head doctor and no the head doctor just parries his ass with his cane he's like nope and this explosive spin ability just gets completely deflected and then we see this little thing on uh the head doctor's cane and it's a little face and when i was first reacting to this i was like no it was in my head i was like what Okay, I see a little face there. Please tell me. Please tell me that's not what I think it is. He said, Obla, Oblada. Obladi, Oblada. Safety for. Oh, don't tell me it doesn't run a rock insect, bro. <laughs> no shot. Look see, at the tip of his cane. There's like a little face. Oh my god. <laughs> Safety first. Obladi, Oblada. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if this is another insect, man, I'm done. I'm dropping it. Okay, next page. <laughs> and guys. The worst thing that possibly could have happened, happened. We are fighting another rock insect in chapter 105. 
in Joe Jolien. You can't make this shit up. But before we get into this fight against another rock insect, a important thing to take note of is that when Josuke shot his attack out of his finger, we knew that something was going on with his birthmark. There was something coming out of it. It looked like another attack, and Josuke actually is aware of it. He says, I felt that something came out, came out of my shoulder just now, but we don't really know where that attack went yet. So it turns out that this attack that was being hyped up by Mamazuku that had so much tension building up to it in chapter 104 that we we're making connections to the infinite rotation and now it's called the explosive spin and Mamazuku himself says that it does not exist. It can go through walls. It can overcome the calamity. It can do anything. It's just just parried by the head doctor. It's like, oh yeah, this thing was so, he's like, nope, actually just, just, just screw you, man. Uh, this attack is essentially just, I don't even care. I'm able to block it with a rock insect. Oh, just so unfortunate to see, but we'll get a little bit into that later and what uh, Mamazuku may have meant by it can actually go through things as the thing that Josuke is shooting at the head doctor is coming out of his finger. And what we're all assuming right now is that what the special ability is that is the explosive spin is what's coming out of his birthmark. And we're not really seeing what is going on with the birthmark attack just quite yet. So while Josuke is charging up another attack out of his finger and while he's doing that, another attack is coming out of his birthmark, the head doctor introduces us to another rocked insect, which is called, which is called Abla Di Abla Da. And I don't really understand this naming scheme of the rock animals we had to do 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 da 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 and now we have abla di abla da which is a beatles reference and a pretty good song where it goes like abla di abla da 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 like i like that song but this the naming steam is so stupid for the rock animals like next up the next rock animal is going to be called like uh so guys when i first read this chapter i was like no like it just a, a wave of disappointment anguish washed over my body and i legitimately thought that like the worst possible thing that could have happened in jojolian just happened but after finishing the chapter i was like okay we are fighting technically a rock insect but it's not as bad as it could have it's not like we're going into a mini arc and we're going to be taken away from the head doctor and we have to fight specifically this rock insect for the next like two to three chapters that's not what's happening at all this is simply just the head doctor having some sort of offensive attack which i really don't mind although i just wish the head doctor's wonder of you had a more offensive ability compared to its more defensive calamity so we weren't continuously being introduced to rock insects and rock animals i was like okay this is so meaningless we've we fought rock animals before and now we're just getting into the most insignificant rock beans like we did rock anim okay we fight rock humans then we fought rock animals a little bit less then we fought a rock insect which is even lower than animals and now this thing isn't even a rock insect he says technically it's not an insect as it doesn't have the proper anatomy and it's not broke up into like its abdomen and all those things so like apparently this thing is just a rock like we have gone through all the stages of the rock you know species and we were down to just simply a rock is attacking Josuke and the way it works is pretty simple uh its design is pretty cool it looks like a handprint and it almost uh it reminds me of like red blood cells the way it works too so pretty much this thing when Josuke attacked the head doctor with his main soap bubble out of his finger it was deflected and attached onto Josuke's hand and just the more he bleeds the more the thing multiplies so at first he tries to rip it off he starts bleeding they multiply he tries to shoot it he bleeds more they multiply so kind of similar to maybe like B IG the way it like grows all throughout your body and honestly one of the reasons I didn't like this when I was first reading it I was like it's just kind of like to do to do da 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 again because the way that worked is that the more Josuke moved the more his joints opened up air and he was getting covered with asbestos and it was just it was like a fungus growing on him almost and this is pretty much the same thing the more he moves or takes damage it grows on him so it's it's just essentially more of the same but again it's just kind of the head doctor having an offensive ability and by no means are we going to go into like a mini arc where it's like Abadi, Abi, Abba, I can't even say the freaking thing's name. Um, Abla di Abla do. We're not going to get like a whole mini arc of this thing. It's just one attack that's happening in this chapter, I think. And I'm pretty sure Josuke will be over to overcome it very soon. But just the fact that there's a rock insect is just, it, uh, yeah, it, it made me super disappointed first reading this chapter. But after going through the chapter again in retrospect, it's just an offensive attack, nothing too big of a deal. And it's just something to deter Josuke a little bit so he's not super easily able to attack the head doctor. So after this rock initially attaches to Josuke and the head doctor kind of tells us what it is, and he's being slowed down. It looks like they're very heavy too as he's being dragged to the ground almost like Echoes Act 3 it looks like. And then we switch back over to Yasuo's perspective at the Higashikata estate with Joshu and Toru. So we're able to see very clearly in this chapter that the plane door is targeting Yasuo as there's like the Higashikata garage next to her and she tries to move under it and then the plane door like in in midair goes whoosh, 
and it like locks back onto her. So that was kind of a good way to establish that the, this is coming for Yasuo. And if we don't defeat Toru soon, this is like inevitably it has to hit Yasuo. There's nowhere else it can go because it's like actually like seeking her, which is uh, pretty scary. So we see that Toru has pretty much done everything he wants to do at the Higashikata estate. He, he looks like he's going to be able to take out Yasuo and Joshu in one fell swoop, two birds with one stone, or rather two of my favorite characters with one plain door, Araki, you you sadist. Um, but that's what's happening right now, and Toru is just kind of beginning to leave. And what Josuke wants is that for... So Paisley Park is with Josuke right now, and he wants Paisley Park to leave and go and able to help Yasuo, because apparently Paisley Park can do so many things, maybe it could also stop this plain door or do something that would make her be able to avoid it. And Yasuo is kind of fulfilling a sacrificial role right now where she's like, I don't care that this plain door is coming at me. I'm going to use all of my power, all of the life I have left, to live to, to to help you josuke and to help you defeat this head doctor she uses paisley park to open the elevator door and expose the head doctor to uh josuke which was a really nice moment for yasuo and i thought it was really brave of her and just really good for her character to be like i know that i'm probably gonna die in a matter of seconds now but i just want to use everything i have left to give to help you josuke so it's like oh yasuo just just good yasuo moment right there and now we get into the final segment of this chapter and this is a very fast-paced chapter if this was to be animated i would say this chapter could be gone through in like seven minutes or something so normally a normal jojillian chapter has quite a bit more dialogue and a lot happens but this chapter is really just a lot of action sequences and especially these last like 15 pages are just like josuke building up to the head doctor as we see that Yasuo is like, okay, opens the elevator door for Josuke. Josuke is able to charge up an attack. And we also see that this plane door is like inches away from Yasuo. So like this thing is coming down in the next chapter. Unless we get, unless we get a flashback, this plane door is making contact with the ground in the next chapter. Knock on wood, Rocky, don't screw me over. I gotta, you know what I need to start doing guys in the reviews? I need to say the opposite of what I want to happen. And then what I actually want to happen will happen. Some reverse psychology on Rocky here. So yeah, just a lot of tension, plane door, coming into contact and we see that Josuke is able to transcend the calamities. If for whatever reason Josuke was using his normal soap bubble, he probably would just be encountering calamities right now, but it's pretty obvious that he has overcome that ability, which is really nice to see and alludes more to how powerful his explosive spin is. And I love these last few pages right now where you have Josuke just pointing right at the head doctor's face, like just like a gun to his forehead right now. And you also have Paisley Park behind Josuke and Soft and Wet. So it's like Yasuo and Soft and Wet and Josuke and all of them working together, like the two main characters, the two couple or the one couple of the part getting to like hit this final blow on the enemy is just, it is super nice to see. But unfortunately, when Josuke Josuke actually fires out this attack. It's blocked by the rock insect. Not actually, not even the rock insect, just the rock. As we can see in this page right here, he shoots it out and just like the tip of one of these things blocks it and deflects it to the other side of the room. And when this happened, I had lost like all hope. I was like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Are you serious? Like the one thing that stops Josuke from using his explosive spin, his infinite rotation, his spin ability that's been hyped up for the past three chapters is my least favorite thing in all of the part, a rock insect. It was just like, Oh my, it's like a Rocky knows we don't like these things. And he's just like rubbing it in our face. And this was like, wow. Especially because Mamazuku, like in this chapter was like, this explosive spin has the ability to go through walls. It doesn't exist. It's so powerful. But then we see it being parried by the head doctor and blocked by rock insects. It's like, well, what is it, Rocky? Is it so powerful or is it like just useless. But I do want to make note of that this ability that Mamazuku is hyping up may only be specifically to the birthmark, where only the bubbles that come out of the birthmark are able to transcend space and time and go through walls and all of that, and the ones that Josuke are shooting out of his fingers are more so diversions. And I really think that is what's happening, as as we see when Josuke misses, he falls to the ground, it looks like all hope is gone, but then we switch back over to the Higashikata State, and we see that Paisley Park has gone through the cell phone, because as we know, Josuke and Yasuo are communicating through the phones in their hand, but it looks like Paisley Park has taken the deflected soap bubble, or maybe the soap bubble that had come out of his shoulder, it's kind of unclear, and she brought the attack through the phone, through the airwaves, and to the Higashikata estate, and it's flying through it's fine at Toru and it's going, it looks like it's going to hit him. I don't want to say anything because at the end of 104, I said, guys, without a doubt, this attack is going to hit the head doctor. And now essentially 
Chapter 105 ends in the same exact way where it looks like an attack is going to hit Toro now instead of the stand version. And initially when I had first read the chapter, that is what frustrated me the most about this. Because like the last chapter was built up in so much hype and a lot of stuff did happen this chapter, but it ends on the exact same cliffhanger as last time. But now it's not the head doctor, it's Toro. But we know that damage transfers between Toro and the head doctor. So it really doesn't matter if it hits the head doctor or Toru, it's going to have the same result no matter what. So in retrospect, this chapter is like super hype and it's really fast paced and it's like just more of just final fight stuff. But the fact that it ends on the same exact cl cliffhanger as 104 is what really disappointed me about this because I just, I want to see what happens when this makes contact and the fact that we get stalled out a little bit more just so we can hit Toru instead of the stand ability is like, I, I guess it's worth it. But the, the one thing that I do like about this, although I wish it didn't take an entire chapter to do this, is that the fact that it, before it was just Josuke in the hospital fighting the head doctor, this sequence of events that happened really made Yasuo more involved in the story, and I do really like that. So Yasuo isn't just this character that's being attacked and having all these terrible things happen to her. She is actively helping out in the fight, and now that she has transported this soap bubble to Toru, it's more like this is a special attack, like a dual heat attack between Josuke and Yasuo, and they're able to fight together to defeat the enemy. And I think Yasuo really deserves that, and she really deserves to be involved in this final attack and and maybe give the finishing blow to Toro. So it did take an entire chapter for Yasuo to deliver this attack, but I really like what Araki did here and how it's Yasuo and Josuke working together. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I do think that it was worth it. So guys, it looks like this chapter review is ending with the same exact thing I said last month, where no matter what, in the next chapter, this attack is going to make impact with Toru, and we are finally going to see the effects of the explosive spin and what could happen. Knock on wood. If, if something happens where this attack doesn't make contact, I will be genuinely disappointed and be like, Araki, what the hell are you doing? Because this chapter, initially, that was my reaction. Like, Araki, what the hell are you doing? Why can't we just, like, attack this guy? We've been through enough. We've got enough buildup. There's enough tension. So if anything else happens, then I'm gonna be a little pissed and a little, like, worried about what Araki's actually writing here. But uh, until we see what happens there, I really think this we, we need to hit Toro here, man. Two cliffhangers in a row, back-to-back -back chapters. Um, I need some resolution, man. I need I need a result of this ability, and I need to see what this new soap bubble is able to do. Please, Araki, please. And the chapter ends off with a little bit of narration that says, nothing will reach him except for a miracle. And I couldn't think of any bigger miracle than this explosive spin, infinite spin ability Josuke has. So hopefully this is the miracle they are referring to. And yeah, guys, those are going to be my thoughts on Jorjolian chapter 105. Like I said in the beginning of the review, very conflicted on this chapter, and I don't even want to make any predictions for the next chapter because it seems like whatever I want to happen, Araki does the opposite, and it is just... I'll just say this, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double down. I'm gonna stick to what I said last chapter of you. Next chapter, this will make impact, and and we'll see the result and and the ability that the explosive spin has on a stand user, and maybe Toro will be defeated uh, once and for all. But until then, guys, we have another month wait. Uh, Jojolian is gonna be on hiatus next month, and it is gonna return in April. But it's also important to note of that there's going to be a big JoJo event happening on April 4th this year. So I wonder why Araki would be taking a month off, maybe getting involved in what this special event will be, maybe getting ready to do an announcement, maybe doing some art for the announcement. So it's kind of exciting that Araki is taking a month break right before this massive JoJo announcement. So maybe he's going to be involved in some way and he's going to be at that uh, JoJo Inherit the Soul event. Stone Ocean, fingers crossed. So uh, maybe that's what Araki is going to be up to in the month of March. So some very exciting things coming for JoJo. Very very soon. So we're going to take a little bit of a low break in March, and then we're going to come back big in April with uh, more of this big Jojolian climax and seeing what's going to happen in chapter 106, as well as having the Jojo inherit the soul event, which hopefully comes with the announcement of the continuation of the anime, which would be just awesome. So in the meantime, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my review for chapter Jojolian 105, as well as you guys are going to want to make sure to follow the social media for myself and Break Free down below, because in March, Break Free is going to be having a Jojolian themed product launch that you guys definitely aren't going to miss. We have some really sick designs that are all Jojolian inspired and I really want you guys to be able to get those unlike last time where everything sold out uh, very quickly. So if you guys are interested in the Jojolian merch for Break Free, 
I'm actually wearing a Break Free t-shirt right now. Uh, be sure to follow Break Free's social media, link below in the description, and you guys will be able to see all the trailers and build up and eventually the uh, announcement release for our Joe Julian themed products. They are very nice. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. Trust me. So go ahead and follow uh, myself and all the Break Free stuff. But for now, guys, again, thank you so much for watching Joe Julian Chapter 105. Shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring the video. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. Do all those things I told you to do because I love you guys. I'll see you guys next month for some more videos, but not a Joe Interview and then you're joining back in April. Sorry, guys, take it easy. Thank you.